This is Milo Page from GraphPad. In this video, I will be introducing Principal Components Analysis, or PCA, which is new in PRISM 9. It's a powerful model used for exploratory analyses with large datasets. I will motivate PCA with an example dataset on breast cancer, and then I'll briefly guide you through running it in PRISM. The data we'll be using are from the University of Wisconsin. Researchers studied potentially cancerous tumors and, along with information about whether the mass was malignant or not, the data contained the estimated size, shape, perimeter, and so on of the tumors. With 10 predictors, it's difficult to visualize these data. In these cases, PCA can reduce the number of predictors by extracting linear combinations of the variables. This is useful for data visualization and for variable reduction for further analyses. Each principal component, also called an eigenvector, is a linear combination of all the input variables. For example, the first component is defined as negative 0.364 times radius minus 0.154 times texture minus 0.376 times perimeter and so on. Each component is orthogonal to all the others, which makes them particularly useful for plotting, as you will see. The first component is selected as the one that explains the greatest amount of variance in the variables. With these data, the first component explains 55% of the variance found in the 10 variables. The second component explains an additional 25%, leading to a combined total of 80% explained with the first two components. Thus, for plotting and future predictive modeling, we could just use the first two principal components rather than the 10 original columns of data. The visualizations from PCA can be very useful. For example, the loadings plot shows some groupings between the columns of data using the first two principal components. We see that symmetry and smoothness are recording almost the same information on this plot. Because these data are well represented by the first two components, this means that one of these two variables is largely redundant. In future practice, we might save money and time by only measuring one of these variables. The same applies to other clusters of variables, such as area, perimeter, and radius. Each of those variables have a simple mathematical relationship, so it's not surprising that they are clustered together. In addition to plotting the columns or predictors, we can also plot the rows of data, using the first and second principal component as the bases. Here we have colored the data by diagnosis. This plot shows that the first principal component is the main one that differentiates between malignant and benign tumors. You can see this because the clusters of each color are primarily differentiated along the x-axis. The second principal component, which is displayed on the y-axis, only pulls out a few additional points. PCA can help you find outlying points with unusual behavior. In PRISM, if there's a specific data point of interest, you can hover over it with your mouse pointer, to get detailed information and a link back to the row or column of the original data table. Running PCA in PRISM is straightforward. To start, you'll need your data in a multiple variables table. There's an icon to launch principal components analysis, or you can select it from the Analyze menu. In the first tab, you'll select the variables that you want to include in PCA. Only continuous variables can be selected as predictors. Here we also provide an option to run multiple linear regression using the selected principal components as the independent variables. This is called principal components regression. In the options tab, you have a couple important choices to make. The first is whether or not to standardize your data, which means centering and scaling them. Most often, you'll want to standardize, and therefore it's selected by default. In rare cases, you might want to only center your data. The most common situation for this is when each column of data was measured on the same scale, so the size of the numbers across the columns have meaning. In even more rare instances, you might not want PRISM to center or standardize your data, so we provide an unstandardized option. The second choice to make is the method to use for selecting the number of principal components. The default here is parallel analysis, which simulates a user-specified number of datasets that have independent columns of data. PCA is run on all of the simulated data, 
which are just noise, and the results are used to adjust for selection bias. The next tab gives you options for customizing the output. With these data, I'll include diagnosis and the symbol fill color. Four tables of results are outputted. These are useful for extracting specific numbers or running further analyses using the principal components. For example, the PC scores table will include any columns of data that were requested for further analyses. You can highlight this table and run new analysis to fit a multiple linear regression or some other further analysis using the components in place of the original data. For many users, however, these tables of numbers are only important as a means for generating the plots that I introduced at the beginning of this video. I hope this video helped you understand when and why you would use PCA and how to do it in PRISM. It's a powerful exploratory tool. Let us know what you think.